Hi, my name is Raghav and I want to talk about Avengers Endgame. Don't worry, this review is completely spoiler free. I'll be back next week with a spoiler full review. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it when it comes out. Now, let's get back to Endgame. That's right baby, Marvel just dropped its 22nd feature film set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is the one we've all been waiting for, the culmination of 10 years of storytelling. Previously on Avengers Infinity War, the pissed off purple raisin in a gold suit Thanos decided to snap his fingers and kill half the population of the universe because of plot reasons? It doesn't matter, he's gorgeous and he has the fullest lips I've ever seen on a raisin. That leaves our original 6 Avengers plus a few stragglers. Will the Fab 6 be able to undo the damage and save their friends and also half the world? I don't know, you tell me. Avengers Endgame was directed by Marvel veterans the Russos, who basically look like white Key and Peele. The Russos started off with TV shows like Community and managed to dump so much action into a situational comedy that Marvel was just like, do you just want to do all our movies? They did the last two Captain America movies, which was in dire need for overhaul after the boar fest that was the first Avenger. And of course, they made Infinity War. So needless to say, they are very familiar with the characters. And if you watch their interviews, it's clear that they are well versed in the comic lore as well. I couldn't think of anyone better to helm the franchise and bring the whole saga to a satisfactory end. And what an end it is. Talk about an epic conclusion. One of my biggest issues with these big multi-part action tentpole franchise behemoths is that the films, although always fun, seem to lack a solid conclusion because they're always leaving avenues open for sequels and spin-offs and prequels and pin-offs. Is spin-offs a word? I don't know, I was on a roll there. Endgame lives up to its name and gives us more closure than anyone could have ever expected. Initially, Infinity War and Endgame were marketed as a two-parter, two halves of one story. And while that's still technically true, one doesn't really compare to the other. Kevin Feige did later say that he wouldn't say that they were one story cut in half because they're both so distinct. To be honest, Infinity War is far weaker than Endgame. Endgame has strong writing, crisp editing and the story moves at a breakneck speed with so many twists, turns, laughs and thrills that they keep you at the literal edge of your seat for the full three hours that it takes to get through this whole story. Because of its massive length, the film has more than enough time to delve deeply into its main character. Characters. Every character has an arc that concludes so well it's just a joy to watch. It's a testament to the skill of the editors Jeffrey Ford and Matthew Schmidt to have been able to pull off a feat this huge. We've come very far from the first Iron Man movie and it's amazing to see how much development there is in this plot. But it's also interesting to see how they haven't forgotten their roots. In some aspects of tone and treatment, Endgame harkens back to the first Avengers film, showing us where each of the characters are post-snap and how their lives have changed and what different circumstances they're gonna have to go through in order to come back together for one last adventure. A well-paced and genuinely hilarious screenplay by Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely is a delight to see rendered on screen and is full of great moments that service nearly every single character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, no matter how obscure. There's also some very heartfelt moments in the film that are efficiently played out and it all just works. The story is so dense and full of surprises. The trailers really did a good job of hyping it up but not revealing anything important. I want to take a moment to praise all the main characters of the film because they really held the film together and propelled the story into a level so far unseen in Marvel movies. Josh Brolin's Thanos is definitely the weakest part of this film but only in how he's written. His action scenes and power are obviously too mighty to behold with amazing choreography and visual effects making up completely completely for the somewhat cookie cutter supervillain persona that he's adorned with for this film. All the character development and depth that was given to him in Infinity War is basically gone. While he was a multifaceted sociopath in the last movie where we didn't know whether we agreed with him or not, in this movie he is 100% the bad guy and that's obviously done to service the plot but it's a little bit jarring to see after we get to know him so well in Infinity War. This is just a nitpick though, it doesn't really hinder the enjoyability of the Film. Karen Gillan's Nebula is a character I never really expected the Russos could get so much mileage out of. With her tumultuous past with Thanos, her conflicting motivations, self-hatred and doubt, and her history with Gamora made for some very interesting storytelling. Her character design 
is also so good but that raspy discounted batman voice she's doing gets a little annoying after a while bradley cooper's rocket is is absolutely hilarious and great fun to watch whenever he's on screen he keeps the film light and jovial even in the heavier moments helping to keep the balance in the tone of the film scarlett johansson's black widow although a huge part of the avengers was always the least fleshed out character Johansson did the best she could with what she had to work with. She's great even though her character is a little bit one note. She plays her part efficiently and has some heartfelt moments as well. Paul Rudd as Ant-Man is great to watch. He's one of the catalysts of the plot of the film, so he has a lot to do and he gets a lot of screen time. Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye, who was completely missing in Infinity War, has a lot of character work in this film. He gets his due and really has a big part to play in the story. His character, the consequences of the snap and how it affects him are really well told he really gets to sink his teeth into the character and he plays his part very well mark ruffalo as the hulk proves that he has tuned this character to sheer perfection the hulk is fun and funny and he's enjoyable to watch and he's doing such a good job in this movie it's really satisfying to see him at work the computer generated hulk looks a lot more like mark ruffalo a lot of the nuances of his performance are really well captured in the animation however the render does look a little bit like a michael bay name. Ninja Turtle. Now this is not necessarily a bad thing. I'm going to leave that up to you. Chris Evans once again proves his mettle as the quintessential Captain America. He truly embodies the character and is a leading figure in the Marvel universe, not to mention the Avengers. Endgame definitely gives Captain America his due. He has so many amazing moments, funny, heartfelt and epic, and he does such a good job of delivering them straight to our heartstrings. He really is a master at work. His story is strong and has a powerful and satisfying arc. Although the way we get there feels a tiny bit rushed, I'm happy to let that slide because it's very satisfying. Robert Downey Jr as Iron Man, who was the first superhero in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is definitely at the helm of this film. He's the one who pushes the film forward and he's the one who leads us all into the amazing ending. His performance as always is enigmatic and powerful. His physicality is strong and dedicated, proving that he is an actor who will go all out for a role and force you to believe in the power of the story. And I've left the best for last. Chris Hemsworth as Thor is straight up bizarre. Thor has the weirdest character arc in the story and it is a laugh riot. It is so so weird and I have no idea how to put it into words. You just have to see it for yourself. Avengers Endgame was filmed before Captain Marvel even had a script and that's very evident that the Russos had no idea what to do with the character. And maybe they didn't want to step on the toes of Captain Marvel's makers and so decided to keep her on the sidelines in terms of character, but she's in the forefront of action and has an amazing new haircut and looks awesome. and i am into it the cinematography by trent opelock is in a word epic there's really no other way to describe it although there are a few scenes where the lighting feels decidedly forced the overall film looks very good and it shifts in look with the shifting tone with ease the music by alan silvestri is nothing much to write home about the music is mostly playing a supporting role and not drawing much attention to itself occasionally swelling to play the signature avengers theme it does its job so you know job well done i guess avengers end game is so so fun it literally is all that i can ask for in a superhero film i highly recommend that you go see it it services all your marvel fan needs and you will leave the theater with a big fat smile on your face thank you so much for watching my review please subscribe to my channel i make new videos every other week i'll be back next week with a spoiler full review so hit subscribe so you don't miss it when it comes out if you see something say something